Hey everybody and welcome back to Wintermore Titus Club where what we have left to do now is play the mysterious module. I can't remember, did we talk to everybody? Yeah, we did talk to everybody after the little thing. Um, sure, let's just play the mysterious module and see what happens. Part 2, Insurrection. We should take four turns, only take six damage. Okay, there's only six enemies. Not too bad. But let's see what those enemies are. Let's see, the knights start to gather around the statue every day to find threats to the castle. It never lets them down. The gatekeeper finds dorkling assassins, marauding ogres, undead mages. Um, is the gatekeeper causing those? Like, is he drawing them there and then also, like, playing both sides of the fence? Like, I brought these enemies, you better fight them. Oh, I didn't bring them, no. They just showed up on their own. Apparently, none of those are important enough to actually have an encounter written. Yeah, not important. Ah, here's something. After months of heeding the Illumazar's wisdom and rooting out all hints of evil, the knights gather around the gatekeeper for a dire proclamation. Even now, a rebellion forments on your borders. The Dark Army has poisoned the minds of the outlying villagers against you, inflaming them into marauding bad bandits that spread unease and unrest. Are you inciting us to attack villagers that really are not bandits? Oh, Sir Enfield, the border villages? But they've shown no signs of rebellion before now. Exactly. I think this guy is trying to get us to kill innocents. Sir Morgane, the Dark Army is cruel and devious. I would not doubt them corrupting our people so. The Gatekeeper has always guided us true, has it not? Uh, could you just maybe investigate, ask people if they're going to rebel? Like, search around first before you go lopping off any heads? Do not be faint of heart, we shall find this evil and we shall eradicate it. Uh, I feel like we're the baddies. Are we the bad guys? So, Dorkling Knight, physical armor. Physical armor. You have magical armor. So, there's the Vamp Orcs. You're the Vamp Orc Elder. And you're a Vamp Orc. You have no armor. You do claw a range of one, so you could do a little bit of a range attack. Another Vamp Orc Elder who does a no range burst attack. But the burst very fact that first gives it a little bit of range. So, I mean, these guys are not insignificant because of their armor makes them tough to kill. And these guys are real troubles. I mean, everybody does a lot of damage. You do three damage, you do three damage, you do three damage. So we just kind of have to, we have to kill some people. And Batu, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's possible we could use him, but... Let's, let's check the party select. I don't think we want Eidwald. I really don't think we do. I mean, maybe because of his dam because of his armor, but his damage is just not high enough. I wish I could... Yeah, I guess I could go to his character sheet. So, just two damage for a basic attack is not what I'm all about right now. So I think Anjaya and Rogi for sure, because, I mean, your damage is really three. Well, it's not really three, it's only two. It's only three if they have a, a plus one damage, or three more targets. So I definitely want Rogi on the job. Maybe I want Batu, because he's got a lot of health. Um, I guess that's his physical armor. That's the indication of that. So, Rogi, Sir Artemain, 
and maybe Anjaya because she has a little bit more range than Janya does. Is there a better, is there better equipment I could give to them? Brilliant Beam places fire. Spark gains friend focus to can chain through allies. Um, Spark gives plus two tactics points of standing in a tile with a ground effect. So that's, I mean, could be potential if I want to stand in Magimist or something. Rogi, you have uh, extra damage to unhurt enemies. Grappling Hook does magic attack. Or plus two tactics points when hitting an enemy with negative status effects. So I want him to do magic attacks. Because they guys have, um, we have magical armor, so I probably don't want to give you magical attack. I mean, it would help for the Darkling Knights who have physical armor, but... Sorry, this is taking a little bit to set up. And then Batu. Do your magic mist that could help us chain. Okay, yeah, yeah, maybe that, maybe that's a good idea. Let's do a party select then. Let's get rid of um, Edwald. Let's put in Sir Artemain. Who do we want to focus on? You want to attack the person with the least health. You want to attack whoever attacked you this turn. What if no one attacks you? What do you then? Um, what do you default to if no one attacks you? Probably take out the Elder. So that means to take out the Elder, I want... Don't know. Don't know where to put people. That's a lot of damage, so... Oof. Uh... Jeez. I really do not know... I do not know right now. Um, Rogi, I think you need to be here. Batu. I mean, Batu, I don't even know if you can get it in, get a hit this turn. Maybe here? Okay. It's probably really bad uh, party choice and, and selection or, you know, positioning. But let's go ahead and enter the battle. All right, so I could just move here and attack you. Okay, so if no one's been attacked, they move to the closest. They they default to the closest. So you who um, tries to target this per unit's attacker, if you haven't attacked anyone, it's just the closest one. All right, so I could move here and then arrow this whole spot consider that. If I move here and then arrow here, it hits everybody. I mean, I guess, I think that's a good opening. It does put fire down. Which is a little unfortunate because now I have to go stand in the fire, but I was going to be in fire regardless. Um, well, fire. Let's talk about fire. Lose one physical armor at end of turn. At turn end. Is that my end or your end? Take one magical damage, but you have magical armor, so maybe it would be reduced? I mean, I could just get in here and attack you. Which may be the best. Or I could kill you. You do three damage, you do three damage. Can you even hit anybody? You can't hit anybody right now, honestly, because your movement. But you can only move here and then attack here. So yeah, you can't do anything. So if I just uh, bring Rogi in, I know I'll stand you in fire. That's fine. I guess I probably didn't even need to do that. I could have used Anjaya. You're gonna okay. Let's. That's probably a, wa a wasted damage point that I didn't need to 
put Rogi through. I'm probably not, like, I haven't been using this to my advantage very much to know where they can attack. So, if I'm standing here, I can't be attacked. They can't reach me. So I could just zap you. From here. Easy. End turn. Yeah, we took a point of damage. You guys want to cluster up? That's fine. I'll take that. I'm about to. You have magical armor. Yeah, I think I bring Rogi in. Get him out of the fire, and just uh, regular shatter shove this guy. Which kills him. Batu, you can go for this guy, I guess. Or we bring you over here. Let's see, Alicia. I, can I just not right now? Hold on. I don't, don't want to. I just want to unclick you, please. Thank you. I move one back, you can't get me. Well, maybe you still can. Because you can move two. So you can move one, two, and then attack one space. So I have to move here to avoid you. If I did move there, I think I could attack this spot and it would chain through. Artemain can only really attack this guy. He can't get down here, so... Nope, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well. It is what it is. I get, I'll take an extra point. I meant to do something else. I meant to move you. Didn't mean to click. Can't undo, because it's already been done. There we are. End turn. Gonna take a few... We'll take a couple hits, unfortunately. Some big hits. Alright, can you just kill him? Can you do that? I mean, I'm assuming you can. Yeah, you'll do three damage. I don't want to move too far. I want to be able to come in on this guy. Trample you. I want to move you back because you're in danger. Move you back, attack. Yeah, that was a real big mistake in letting her, the accidentally clicking and letting her be attacked. Move here and um, and smoke bomb this guy just to put some damage on him. All right, and turn. And now I can just finish it off with Rogi, right? A regular roll push attack. Yeah, easy. I mean, we kind of screwed it up with the damage there. Oh, but we still managed to get far on everything. Wow. Staggeringly super savvy. I'll take it. You return from slaying the bandits, but a pall seems to hang in the air. For one night at least, this action did not sit well. Um, I'm a guess. It was... it was Enfield? Brothers, I am uncertain as to the justice of that fight. Those people were poorly provisioned, starving. Had they any choice but st but to steal? Perhaps we should have tried to reason with them. I tried to tell you that, but you didn't listen. 
My heart is in turmoil over the gatekeeper's oath. I fear its counsel hides a deceitful darkness. And then they attacked you. Huh? Huh? What was... Um... Power's out? The computer's still working. <laughs> so... <laughs> something uh, a little bit wrong with the continuity of that... Uh, of the art there. Um... That was a coincidence. It had to be. It's just the blizzard outside, right? <laughs> Nonsense. Clearly, clearly this book has a strong electro-psychic resonance. Either way, we're not going to be able to keep playing in the dark. I think there's a bunch of candles and matches in the storeroom by the stadium. I can go get some if we want to keep going. I'll go with you. We'll be right back. Get the candles. Um, let's talk to some people first. Janya? Did the book physically cause, or psychically, cause the power outage? Is it because the book is about knights and they do not they did not have electricity? Uh, I don't think it's like that. Every fan knows CNC was created by Max Morgan, Patricia Shen, and Jeff Men Mefneth. If Enfield really was part of it, he must have gotten erased from CNC history for some reason. Um, maybe because they turned evil and he decided not to be evil? So, this story is about Enfield, huh? Did someone finally give us the dirt on him we've been waiting for? I don't know, kind of seems like he's the good guy, at least in these stories. Are we sure that this isn't the universe telling us to stop reading? Let's just make sure everything's still locked up tight. No weirdness. If we run into any actual real dorklings on the way, I'm going to be real weirded out, you guys. Um, let's go to the stadium and get those candles. It's brutal out here. We should finish up quickly. Hey, Jacob. Yeah? You don't think this figurine is really magic or cursed or anything, right? I don't know. Less weird than old man Enfield inventing curses and catacombs? I guess if he was around back then, it would explain how he ended up with the gatekeeper figurine. But can you imagine him inventing epic fantasies or having friends? Maybe he used to be cool, but the world wore him down, and he got boring and mean. I hear that happens a lot. Maybe. I still think there's something weirder going on here. Guess we'll have to finish that module to find out. Well, while we're here... What do you have to say, Jacob? I still think there's something weirder going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we check the stats? Is the tournament bracket? Everyone in the snowball tournament is listed here. Let's see where we are. Oh, hey, they haven't updated the bracket to show that we beat the New Wave Appreciation Club. Maybe they'll do it after break. All right, nothing around the side, right? Snowball tournament this Thursday. Well, I mean, head back to the classrooms then. We have the candles, you guys. Here we go. Great, let's keep going. Uh, I mean, are we sure we want to have a ring of candles and, and be reading a cursed book? I'm not saying it's cursed, but I'm also saying it's not not cursed. Okay, let's keep going. Does anyone want to say the same thing? Are you going to talk about the... I'm glad the power went out because candles set just the right mood for discovering world-changing secrets. So I guess I just couldn't remember what Batu said last. Even in the story, that figurine is bad news. Maybe it'll help us figure out what to do with it. The story better have some good dirt on Enfield after we froze our butts off getting those candles. Thanks for finding those candles. It would have felt terrible to stop playing when we were so close to figuring out what happened between Enfield and Morgane. Yeah, so... Let's do that. Let's play. There's a whole bunch of little ones. A whole bunch of little guys. So... Maybe we'll just use the same same group. The same party. We should only take two turns to clear them, though? One tactics power used? I guess we'll see how the battlefield is laid out. The breaking point. 
The next time they gather around the statue for its wise counsel, the Doubting Knight beseeches the Gatekeeper for direction. Great Gatekeeper, please lend me your wisdom. I have felt ill at ease about your last order. We vanquished the bandits, but how can we know if they were truly villainous? You must not waver in your duty, or Lagaria will be lost. They sought to bring down your reign and plunge the land into chaos. Is that not danger enough? A new threat approaches that also seeks such ends. A caravan of merchants travels through the mountain pass. They spread rumors and lies to your loyal subjects. They sound just like regular dudes that you want us to murder for your own evil reasons. The trading caravan? But they come through every year. They're harmless merchants. If you were unable to perceive the harm they have caused, it is, un it is fortunate indeed that you have my guidance. Words may damage more than swords, especially when those words are placed by the Dark Army to bring our domain to ruin. The only way to defend Lagaria is to defeat them before they destroy you. You ride out to find the merchants. Upon encountering the caravan, one calls out to you. He calls cheerfully over to you, asking you to sit and join him. They've been on a long journey and are eager, eager to share tales of what's gone on in their absence. Do not be fooled by their demeanor. They are dark spies, each of them. Um, Sir Morgane, can you please not be such a right jerk? Ready your attack, men. I don't, yeah, I, I'm with you, Colin, dot, dot, dot. Are we really gonna do this? I mean, the encounter is written in the module. What if it provides critical evidence? We must press on and discover what became of the knights. I guess so. These knights aren't us, we're just playing a game. I mean, it's a book you could just turn the page and read what goes on. It's not like the rest of the book is written as you play it. You can find out what's going on if you just don't play this. Oh, they are in a weird line. Um, so Batu's not going to help me. Because Batu would have to be able to move. Yeah, because he can't come down here because he can't get on the side of them so I think uh, I don't know I mean I could just chain everyone to death really you have no armor you have three max health I mean I could just put Alicia down and chain you all immediately to death because she would do three points So, I guess that's what I do. I mean, that's what needs to happen. That's what needs to happen, I guess. I mean, I can set up. I, mean, I think I think this is all for naught. I'll take out Artemain. Let's take out Rogi for now. Just in case this doesn't work what I want to do, I'll just put Edwald right up front to block. Like, I'll move him to position here. And, um, Janya can come here. But, that's it, I think. And ba enter battle. And then, Alicia, if you can just attack this spot... And then it'll chain through everybody. <laughs> Boom. Everyone's dead. Congratulations, Alicia. You killed all the caravan. You killed everyone, all all the squishy squishy merchants. I know it's just a game, but attaching attacking these merchants feels wrong. I guess the only thing we can do is win the battle quickly and move on. Um, you've already won, Alicia? 13 enemies defeated? Look at that. Oh, we didn't use a tactics power, so we didn't get the, uh, we didn't get the staggeringly super savvy. That's funny. I, I, uh, will argue that that was better than using a tactics power using just one regular attack to kill 13 people at once. 
guess that's it. About it for the merchants. They were just passing through and the knights just killed them? Does the book know that's not a, uh, not okay? Let me keep reading. While all the other knights celebrate, the dowdy knight sits alone, thinking about the merchants. They didn't look evil, they just looked confused and scared. What if the statue isn't guiding us down the right path? What if it has its own ends? I've been trying to tell you this, dude. By day, the gatekeepers praise the knights, and calls them valorous, and says your unity is the key to defending the realm. Still, every restless knight brings new villains, or excuse me, new nightmares, as the gatekeeper calls, secret monsters and hidden villains, causing all the castle's problems and threatening new ones. Um, not, that's not a sentence. That's, that's, a, that's not a full sentence, but whatever. I can stand by as witness no longer. We cannot trust the gatekeeper. Impossible. Our castle would have, fall would have fallen to evil forces long before now, if not for the gatekeeper's help. It is just as I have feared. One of your own has fallen to the Archlich's influence and is trying to spread conflict among you. He is no longer a Knight of Ligaria. He is your enemy now. As his friends turned against him, the lone knight fled. But he did not flee alone. In the ensuing chaos, he was able to steal away the gatekeeper. By taking the statue onto himself, he removed its influence from the Knights of Lagaria. But the gatekeeper was displeased and its darkness continues to spread. And is he finally... So is Enfield trying to get us to... Like, is he trying to train us to defend against the other knights? Like, the three other knights? Um... Or has the statue finally corrupted him? Like, over all this time, it's finally... Finally worked its magic. I don't know. That's where it ends. What? That's it? Uh? But wait, so... What happened to Enfield and the Curses and Catacombs founders? Well, I mean, I doubt they actually fought real bandits or killed bystanders or anything. But judging by the fact that he's here now, and everyone else went on to develop CNC and get super successful, maybe he disagreed with their direction and they kicked him out? That would explain why he's not in any credits. Furthermore, he must have stolen the statue in real life, or at least this figurine. Exhibit A, we found it found it in his office. So did the statue get to him? Is that why he's breaking us breaking up all the clubs with this snowball tournament? We asked that question already, Alicia? I dunno, maybe he's just still bitter about uh, bitter that his club kicked him out, so he wants to get revenge on all the other clubs. We can't eliminate the possibility that the figurine holds some power of importance or importance. We should keep it locked away while we continue to investigate. So what do we do now? We need to take that eh, down is what. Maybe there's some kind of concrete evidence that we can use to get him arrested or at least fired. For doing what? Stealing a figurine? Making a snowball tournament too high stakes? No one has an answer to that, huh? Hey, today is Christmas Eve, right? Huh? Oh well, yeah, I guess it is. It's the fifth night of Hanukkah, too. So, I've been thinking, maybe to liven things up a little bit, we could do a little gift exchange? Not in the real world, but in CNC, I mean. And Jaya has some extra gold, and I was thinking it might be fun to spend it on some holiday presents for the party. Subject to Catacomb Master Approval, of course. But actually, that's not a bad idea. You guys have been gaining a ton of XP lately with all these battles. It's probably about time for some character progression. In honor of the holiday season, let's have all the characters unlock a new upgrade slot. Yes! That's great! So, who wants presents? Your characters can now equip a second upgrade. Thank you! I was thinking... I was sure we'd have to only use one the whole time. Um... Excuse me? I'm sorry, I was trying to read. Give a gift. Give Colin a CNC gift. Give Johnny a CNC gift. Give Jacob a CNC gift. Give Batu a CNC gift. I'm assuming that means just talk to them. Batu. What did I get, Sir Artemane? A horse brush? 
a paintbrush or horse paint. Horse paint? Um, I think we get him a brush to brush his his steed, uh, whose name I've already forgot. White Falcon, was it? I know you like horses, so I got you a fine horse brush. It was crafted by master artisans out of moonwood and the hair of a wyvern. That's, thanks, that's really thoughtful. I'll make sure to groom White Falcon every day, hey, eh? I, I remembered. Um, I might not be describing grooming him every session because you probably think that was a little boring, but noted, your horse will be impeccably maintained unless you specify otherwise. Hey, that's what we get. So we unlocked the horse brush. Trample deals plus one damage if it, if it targets an enemy with a negative status effect. Uh, I actually have a present too. You didn't have to do that. Well, everyone seemed to kind of like my drawing the other day, so I figured maybe people would like it if I drew their characters for them. That's that's pretty great, Batu. Here. Is that, is that us? Yeah. Whoa, these are amazing. Thank you. This is precisely how I pictured Janya. Excellent work. All right, Colin. Well, let's let's leave you last, Jacob. What do I get, Rogi? Escape from New York on VHS. Ticket to see the Road Warrior. Some cool theme music. I mean, do they have Escape from New York on VHS in CNC? Like, do they even have a VHS player? It sounds like we're in kind of a fantasy world without te televisions. Do they get tickets to see the Road Warrior? I don't know if uh, if Mel Gibson exists in uh, in the CNC world. So you get some cool theme music, I think. I got Rogi a magical artifact. Of course, you're going to say it's magical. Um, that makes cool theme music play in the background whenever he makes a dramatic entrance. Oh, Red! Can we say this that one song by The Clash about the police? We sure can, dude. Uh, Colin? Since it's a magical illusion, I suppose there's no reason it has to use period-appropriate instruments, so sure. You realize it might not be the best idea for a character who's always sneaking into places to blare his theme song all the time though, right? Don't worry, I got this. I'll save it for times when it's important for Rogi to have a theme song play. We got Rebel's background music. Rogi's basic attack deals plus one damage if he's standing in a tile with ground effect. Oh hey, I got you a real life gift. I got everyone these Wintermore pens. Jacob, did you steal these from the supply closet when we got the candles? I also got you the gift of plausible deniability. Yeah, so we can't, uh... We can't prove that he sold them. Janya? Where did I get Janya? A psionic radio? A psychic magnifying glass? Or an anti-snake amulet? <laughs> um... Let's go for the Psychic Magnifying Glass. Since you're a Psychic Detective, I get you a Psychic Magnifying Glass. It lets you see psychic phenomena, you know, zoomed in. <laughs> Excellent! You have my thanks, Wizard Lady. Hmm, what does Psychic Phenomena look like? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, my cat rolled directly over on the keyboard and uh, pressed the button. So I guess we'll never know what that said, unless you pause it at just the right moment. Um, we got the Psychic Magnifying Glass. Plus two tactics points if they KO an enemy. Alicia, I have given you a gift as well as Janya, not Janya. For my Christmas offering, I have worked out an agreement with Handel and instruct have instructed him to focus on sending you positive energies. For the next two weeks, you should feel an increase in cheerfulness and a boost to your affirmative psychic aura. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks. Whoa, sorry, buddy. Come on, stop. Stop it, kitty. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. I'm sure there was some very important stuff there that we missed, but uh, you can't blame my cat. He's a sleepy boy that wants to roll over and fall asleep on the keyboard. Alright, Colin. What did I get Edwald? Water from the Marsh of Madness? A bag of infinite snow? Or promising new campaign setting? Um... Let's get him some water from the Marsh of Madness, because who knows what that's all about. I got you this vial of water. It's from the Marsh of Madness. Hey, that's where we had our first adventure. Uh, was it? 
Huh, I didn't even know the difference between a paladin and a fighter and a paladin. A single dorkling nearly wiped our whole party, remember? That's why I got it. I wanted you to have a memento from when we were first starting out. I used my Fedge's limited portal spell to teleport it, teleport over and get it. See? Um, is, is Fedge just Jeff backwards? See, I marked it on my spell sheet. That's really thoughtful. I'll treasure it. And I'll only consume it to gain plus one against madness effects if I really, really need to. Edwald's basic attack deals plus one damage when adjacent to three plus enemies. Okay, so if you get in the middle and like are surrounded, you can do extra damage. Probably not very useful, honestly. A vial of seemingly ordinary water that reminds Edwald of happier days with his two best friends. I have a special gift for Anjaya. It's a small but powerful magical artifact called a wishing token. One time, it'll allow you to perform an action not normally possible in the bounds of this universe. Aww. Wow, that does sound like a lot of power. Yeah, I noticed that sometimes you got frustrated when you wanted to do something that the rules wouldn't let you do. <laughs> like when I wanted to cast Freezing Beam to ice the Elixir of Invulnerability so the Orc Doctor couldn't drink it, or summon a mouse inside that treasure chest to open it from the inside because my wand could definitely fit through the keyhole. Exactly, I thought this would help. You'll have to choose wisely when to use it, but it can help you do one of your fun ideas, even when they're not strictly viable in the game. Ah. Oh hey! Looks like the power's back! Merry Christmas, everyone! Cool! Everyone want to go to the cafeteria and eat canned Christmas meats? My thoughts exactly. Sounds like just the thing! You got Tactician's Pen. Spark gives plus two tactics points if it has three or more targets. Uh, we'll be, I think we'll be uh, using that because we like to chain up our attacks. That was a nice way to spend break. It was good to get to spend a little downtime with my friends. But what a lot of fuss over such a weird little, huh? Oh, someone's gotten the, uh, someone's gotten the figurine, haven't they? When the power was out, they came in here and sold the figurine. Wait, didn't I leave the statue right here in the trunk? Where is it? It's, it's not here, but that's impossible. I know I put it right in my trunk. Could someone have taken it? Huh? This can't be happening. Chapter complete. Well, this is gonna be a heck of a dream. We are floating through the air above this skating rink. Uh. You need to listen to me. What you're doing is wrong. Alicia, you have been found guilty and sentenced to death. Huh? Death? What? What am I guilty of? What you're doing is wrong. You are a threat to the school and you must be destroyed. You're the threat. You're the one who's making clubs destroy each other. Threats must be eliminated. And you are a threat. No, get away from me. Ah! Ah! You killed Sir Enfield. Ah! Yes, destroy the threats. Um... So you want us to kill Enfield? Because you're the evil, evilest bad guy? No, that's not what I meant to. I didn't want to. All threats must be eliminated. If you don't destroy them first, they will come for you. Attacking is the only way to ensure safety. Oh, hey. Alicia, Knight of the Tactics Club. Will you learn where your enemies lie in wait? No. We don't trust you, weird pyramid head guy. Oh. No, I'm not going to listen to you. You know the other clubs are your foes. They will destroy you if you do not destroy them first. You know the principal is your foe, how sad and bitter he has become. Yet you robbed him of the one thing that could bring him solace. Oh. I said I'm not listening. You know that Septavia looks upon your selfishness with pity and disgust. You know that the clubs you have defeated have only grown to hate you more. You know that even now, all of your foes gather to plot your downfall. That's not true. I'm helping people. I, I can stop all the fighting. Alicia, Knight of the Tactics Club, I have shown where your enemies lie in wait. Do not doubt my power. Huh? What was that? I guess that was something in the real world to save your game. Yes, please. Chapter 5 Ugh, 
How did the Animal Identification Club make the semi-finals? I've heard there are only two students in that club, and yet they keep winning. Do they really care about identifying animals that much? A new animal club? Introducing... The Animal Identification Club. I do like the uh, headband. I like the ears, that's cool. Um, I don't like that you have a triangle, because I hate pyramids. What are we going to do? They seem really tough. Remember, we are animals. We know how to fight when cornered. I do like your logo with the, the kitty cat and the uh, magnifying glass over it. Avery and Duncan. Yeah, but they keep getting bigger and they beat that club with the robot horse. Oh, you're, you're talking about us. Hey, hey, don't panic. Listen, you trust me, right? Yeah, I promise it'll be okay. We'll find a way to beat them. We're not going to let them take away our club. Okay, yeah, thanks. You always know what to say. We won't let them destroy our identities. Your identities? Like, Animal Identification Club, like, do you identify as an animal? Is that what's going on, Duncan? <laughs> Guys, I have some bad news. The figurine is gone. What? Where did it go? I looked everywhere for it last night. I knew exactly where I put it. It, it just disappeared. Ugh, of course this would happen now. It seems like everything's going wrong all at once. It's not enough with the snowball tournament and Jacob getting called down to Enfield's office. Jacob got called down to Enfield's office? Wait, Jacob's in trouble again? Oh god, he didn't have anything to do with that noise last night, did he? Nah, that noise was our death trap of a skating rink turning into a giant sinkhole. Oh man, are there literally things going to come out of the ground to attack the school? Jacob's in trouble because someone spray-painted graffiti of the gatekeeper sigil out on the stadium. That wasn't any of us. What? That can't be a coincidence. The statue disappears on the same day as someone sprays its symbol on the wall? I don't know what to tell you. Jacob's been called down to the office since he's the obvious suspect for any new graffiti. And Janya is investigating the mark. Go talk to those two, I guess. Uh, if you want to know more about what's going on. I have my hands full trying to figure out how we're going to, to prepare for the next round of the snowball tournament. Alright, I guess I'll see what I can find out. If you see either of them, could you tell them the tactics club is supposed to be meeting? We can't play without them. In the meantime, maybe we can keep figuring out White Falcon's lineage. Said his great-great-great-grandfather would have been alive during the Siege of White Throne, right? Could he have fought in that? At least someone appreciates the work I put into world building. Trying to figure out your in-game horse's lineage. Alright, so I think this is where I end the episode right now. I'm sorry, I didn't want to talk to you, Jordan. Um, but we found some weirdness about the, the principal, but I think we have more questions than answers at, the, at this point. But thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you again next time.